Hey everybody, another video here for you today. I've been looking into this one for a few days. An article just came out not too long ago. I got a really nice message from somebody in this part of the world here. And I'll do this video just for them. We're going to go down to Turkey here. This is just over the Armenian border. It used to be in Armenia today in Turkey. This is the ancient city of Ani. And you notice here, you can just tell from overhead that this is a place that people lived in for a long time in ancient times. And Google Earth just gives you a great perspective, one that you would not get on the ground. And I think you have to include it almost in some of these stories, or you're just getting part of the story here. 900 years ago, 1,000 years ago, this place was flourishing. And it just kind of sits in ghostly ruins today. Let's go to a story here. Here's the article I was talking about, World Heritage in Turkey, Ani, the Forgotten Ghost City of the Northeast. Here is a look at the view from the city here. And I guess this article came out about a month ago. I bookmarked it a couple days ago for one of my ancient history news videos. But a lot to say about this place. I also like sharing cool scenery stuff that people have not heard about before, different periods of history. And I actually looked into this place a little bit during some research I'd done over a few years because this place was known as the city of a thousand churches and churches in Turkey and Armenia a thousand years ago, 1500 years ago. Well, they had some pretty interesting things to say to me in my research. Here are the kind of ghostly ruins today and you notice you can kind of make out there are visitors at the site. It seems to be visited quite a bit in this area of the world, but just kind of out in a desolate area. On the left there is the main cathedral with its dome missing. And if you remember my old subs, that research I did, there were some pretty cool depictions in the domes and some of these churches there. Here's a close-up, Cathedral of Ani. These ruins are on the Turkish-Armenian border. A thousand years ago, this place was probably packed. It says Ani was the capital of the medieval Armenian kingdom between 961 and 1045. I will leave a few links below. It says Ani was once one of the largest cities in the world, ruling with might over the region. And although now it is an eerie, abandoned city of ghosts, with little bit of imagination, one can almost see the city as it might have been. You know that heavy feeling you get when you see an ancient site or ruin and can almost feel all the lives that have passed through it and try to imagine it in all its former glory? Well, look no further than Ani, a medieval Armenian city on the Turkish border deemed worthy of being called a treasure of world cultural heritage when UNESCO rec recognized it as such in the early hours of July 15, 2016. The first people to settle in the area did so around 3000 BC, setting up camp on the banks of the Emerald Green Akurian River. Here is another look at the place they call City of a Thousand Churches, and then later a Thousand and One Churches. Here is another look at some of the ruins down by the river, and I've had some messages recently asking me if I'm a Christian. Uh, no, I'm not a Christian. I am a spiritual person. I just find ancient texts to be very interesting, and the Bible is certainly ancient text. And originally, I had no interest in this, no interest in theology or where stories came from, especially from in the Bible. I had no interest whatsoever. But after thinking about it a while, I thought maybe I might be a good person to investigate it because I'm not influenced by agendas or biases. And plus, where that big whopper story comes from 2,000 years ago, well, that's the greatest mystery of all time. I will leave a link for that story below, but here is a look at some archaeological work going on here about 115 years ago. Here is a look at some of the ruins front and back. It was called the Church of the Redeemer. Many, many churches there. Here's another look, some of the landscape and what they say are defensive towers at the site here. Here's another website I will leave below, Ancient Armenian City Reveals New Secrets. Here is an engraving done, and this was done in 1842. This is not a new article, but I found it very interesting. It says, Turkish archaeologists have recently published discoveries 
made underneath the ancient Armenian capital city of Ani, receding water has revealed an opening to a comprehensive network of tunnels dug beneath the ancient city located in the present-day Turkish province of Kars. It says, at its zenith, Ani rivaled the likes of Constantinople, Baghdad, and Cairo in size and influence. By the 11th century, Ani had grown to over 100,000 people. Renowned for its splendor and magnificence, Ani was known as the city of 40 gates. Why the number 40? Not so prevalent in ancient text. In the city of 1,001 churches, it would later become the battleground for various contending empires, leading to its destruction and abandonment. Today, Ani largely remains a forgotten ancient ghost town in modern-day Turkey, and there is one of the many tunnels they found underneath this city. Even says there were some places of worship underground. Maybe they had to go underground in some very early parts of this worship here, but it says there was as many as 823 underground structures, and the total length of all these combined tunnels went for 500 meters. It's got way more interesting when I found this name attached to this ancient city, George Gurdjieff. Those of you who follow John Anthony West, and I have mentioned him in more than a few videos, but those of you who follow what was written on ancient Egypt, a distant past ancient Egypt, know this name, and it's familiar to some of you, I'm sure, but he claimed to have seen a pre-sand map of Egypt with an interesting depiction of what we call the Sphinx today. So interesting that he made a trip to Egypt and wrote about it. Some brief history of the mystic philosopher, as he is called, and his writing on the fourth way, I found pretty interesting. But it says he was born around 1866. His family later migrated to Kars, and that is the place that you need to depart from when getting to ancient Ani. So he must have grew up fairly close. Gurdjieff visited the city here in about 1886, and he wrote this in his book, Meetings with Remarkable Men. It said, about the city of Ani, there still exists one very interesting legend explaining why, after being called the city of a thousand churches, for a long time, it came to be called City of a Thousand and One Churches. This legend is as follows. Once the wife of a certain shepherd complained to her husband about the shocking misbehavior in the churches. She said there was no place for quiet prayer. Wherever one went, the churches were as crowded and noisy as beehives. And the shepherd, heeding her indignation, began building a church especially for his wife. In former times, the word shepherd did not have the same meaning as it has now. Formerly, a shepherd himself was the owner of the flocks he grazed, and shepherds were considered among the richest people of the country. Some of them even possessed several flocks and herds. And of course, shepherd is tied to many stories coming from a long time ago, roughly 2,000 years ago, and of course, the Hyksos who exited out of Egypt were called the shepherd kings. But just concluding here, it says, when he had finished building the church, the shepherd called it the church of the shepherd's pious wife. And from then on, the city of Ani was called the city of a thousand and one churches. Other historical data assert that even before the shepherd built this church, there were many more than a thousand churches in the city. But it is said that during recent excavations, a stone was found confirming the legend of the shepherd and his pious wife. And I wonder if that's based on a much more ancient story. Gurdjieff might be a new name for some of you, but I found some of his writings, some of the most interesting I ever read. So that might be a new thing for some of you to check out. But here it just talks a little bit about Gurdjieff and his travels. It says, we follow him as he traces Gurdjieff's journey from the search for the Samoon Brotherhood in Iraq. And he found some writings on the Samoon Brotherhood at ancient Ani when he was snooping around there, I guess. But it says, to his findings of a map of pre-sand Egypt, then to the Sphinx and the Great Pyramid and Upper Egypt and Thebes, the Temple of Man, Temples of Karnak, Valleys of the Kings, Edfu, and finally to the headwaters of the Nile, Gurdjieff said he had been four times through the initiate mysteries of Egypt. His discovery was, as he said, 
this prehistoric Egypt was Christian many thousand years before the birth of Christ, that is to say that its religion was composed of the same principles and ideas that constitute true Christianity. That is a little bit on Gurdjieff. I will try to link a video or two where he is mentioned. I think a video where I featured John Anthony West, he is mentioned. Here is a book, Gurdjieff in Egypt, the original esoteric knowledge. Pretty interesting writing. I thought some of his work was fascinating. Also a look at ancient Ani, tunnels, ruins, good scenery, cathedral there. I think I'll wrap it up here. That is my video on ancient Ani. Thanks to the person in this area of the world who sent me the nice message. From overhead, you get a really get an idea of the vast ruins here. But that is just a different period of history that I've been talking about, different area of the world. I enjoy doing that. I am still working on another video or two, but I hope you thought that was cool. And you all have a very safe day.